So hello everybody, I'm Sam from Danelles and today I'm here to show you how to make our double sided lampshade. So I've actually got one here that I've already made just to show you and give you an idea of what it is we're going to be doing today and it's going to be a step by step workshop and I'm going to take you through all the materials and equipment you need and then each stage of making up our lampshade. So as you can see Mine has a fabric on the outside and it has this lovely wallpaper on the inside, which I think is a bit the star of the show. So it's going to be something really exciting to watch, hopefully to inspire you. You might be making along with me and already have the materials at home. And if you do, I can't wait to see what you're going to make. Um, and if not, hopefully this will inspire you to make a different kind of lampshade. So all the materials today are available from danels.com. Um, we've also got a live chat going as well. I can already see that popping up there on my screen. Um, so we're going to be welcoming lots of people along with us today um, and also you can ask questions on there and I might not be able to answer those because I'll be busy focusing on showing you what to do uh, but the team at Danelles will be there to help as well. So I'm just going to pop my phone onto my stand and show you my workstation so you're going to get a nice view of my ceiling shortly and then we'll get going with the demonstration. There we go. Uh, so that's my work area. So um, this is our second um, live uh, workshop that we've done. Our first one was for our drum um, lampshade making kit. Um, and this is pretty much the same materials. So if you're already um, a Danelle's customer, then you might recognize some of these things, but I'm just gonna take you through them all anyway. Um, so First of all, I'm actually just going to start with the PVC and you can see that I've already laid up my workstation ready. So the PVC here is the main part of the lampshade. So again, if you've used our kits before, you might recognise it. And if not, just to show you, this has got a paper backing because underneath here is self-adhesive. But if we flip over, we've got exactly the same on the other side. So both sides are self-adhesive and that's what obviously makes it the double-sided lampshade. So this PVC, the lampshade making PVC, is exactly what you can expect to see in the shops when you buy a lampshade. So it's professional um, premium quality. Um, it's also fire resistant, so it's been tested quite rigorously. And it's also been tested by the Lighting Association Labs as well. So you're pretty much guaranteed to be buying exactly the right product that you need. And on here, you'll see grid marks. You don't need to worry about those because we sell these in sizes dependent on the um, size of rings you want to use and these are all pre-cut for you which is brilliant because it makes it a really easy accessible thing to make. So this is our PVC. I'm just going to pop that to one side. And then we have our rings. Now, these come in sets of two. And I'm just going to focus on this one. This is our plain ring. And just to explain to you about diameter, might not be something that you've maybe used very much since you were doing high school maths. But just to remind you, the diameter is across the circle. So this is a 30 centimetre ring. And we actually sell our ring sets in, in as small as 10 centimetres, which is about this wide right through to a metre. So if you fancy making yourself a really big shade at a metre wide, then you can do. It's the kind of thing that you often see in a restaurant hanging above um, a nice round table or maybe in a hall. Um, and maybe you've got the space at home. And once you've learned the skills today on the workshop, you'd be able to make that shade, which is great. So that's our ring and our diameter. And just to go on to the utility ring, this is what you'll recognise as either hanging down from your ceiling or sitting on your lamp base. And just to mention this section in the middle and just to bring it up to the camera a little bit, you'll see there that there is a plastic insert. So I'm just going to get my light fittings and show you why that is.
So you'll recognise this one. This is a UK light fitting um, and this will fit straight in to the plastic centre of the utility ring. Um, and also you'll recognise these from sitting on a lamp base as well as hanging down from a pendant ceiling shade. Um, and then there's this one and this is a European fitting which you can see is slightly wider so if you just simply and I'm not going to do it now but you just simply squeeze this in pop it out and then that will give you an opening that will accommodate the European fitting and they're quite commonly seen on IKEA um, lamps so if you're buying um, IKEA lamp products or maybe you've bought a lamp in from um, Europe then you would be able to use that fitting with it so pretty versatile So actually, when we make up our lampshade, the only thing you're going to be able to see is the spokes because all of this is going to be covered um, with the fabric that we're going to be using. So it's just covered in a, a white plastic coating just to make it look quite smart. So those are our rings. I'll pop those to one side. We're also going to need some of our double sided high tack tape. So it comes with like a little tab that then keeps it closed. There we go. And I'm just gonna lift that off. And here we are. So here's our tape. So you'll see it's quite flexible and there's a reason for that, which I'll talk you through as we go through um, the, the step by steps. It's actually clear and the backing is red um, and it's very high tack because this is what's really going to hold our shade together for us. Um, so we're going to use that in a couple of steps time. And then also you'll need our rolled edge tool and you're probably thinking well what on earth is that for so just let me grab my lampshade and I'll show you so to get this really beautiful professional edge here we're going to be folding fabric and rolling that under the edge and this tool will help us so we're actually going to be pushing the fabric underneath using this later on so that's our rolled edge tool and then the only thing that you will need extra to this is some of our self-adhesive PVC strips. So you can see that that comes on a roll. There's actually 25 meters on this roll, so it will give you lots and lots of opportunity to make double-sided lampshades in the future. And that's the strip there. It's, um, it's one and a half centimeters wide, and we're actually going to use that to kind of create a margin. So if you're a sewer or a quilter, um, then that you will know about seam allowances and effectively we're going to be creating a seam allowance using this a little bit later on. So I did a little tot up on the danals.com website and all of this, all of the materials you need come to under £16, which for a really stunning double-sided lampshade, I think is really, really good value. And obviously the whole point of making your own shades is that they're bespoke to you um, and you can make them in whatever fabric or wallpaper that you want. So let's just have a talk about now what you're going to need at home. So I'm just going to pop these back on the side there. So things you'll need from home in terms of tools, really straightforward. You're going to need a pair of fabric scissors and a second pair of scissors, and that's for cutting the paper and the tape with. And then an optional extra, if you have one, is a seam roller. And these are used for wallpaper, usually for making the seams meet a little bit better, and we can be using that as well. Not completely necessary, but great if you've already got one. So as you can see, it's a fairly good kitchen table craft. Um, you don't need a lot from home apart from the materials to make up the shade. You can also, if you want to, use a craft knife. And if you do, just make sure you protect your table. I've already protected mine. Just on the side here, you can see that I've got a cutting mat and that's always good to have. And you just need a clean, flat surface as well. So let's get on with our demo. So first of all, we're going to start with our PVC and we'll just have a little chat through my materials. So I've got a wallpaper here 
And this wallpaper I've actually cut from the length of a roll. Um, it doesn't really have any direction. It's quite busy and quite bright, which is why I've paired it with this really simple, plain cotton. And just get those so you can see them. So the wallpaper, as I said, from the length of a roll, Wallpapers are normally about 53 centimetres wide, um, so it's easier to cut from the length if you want to. If you did want to cut um, so you have the pattern, you would need to line it up in the middle if you were using kind of two sections of a wallpaper to create the pattern. And we've actually put, quite handily, a blog post live today um, on our blog at, at danellsblog.com about pattern matching wallpapers. So if you want to take a look at that after the workshop, that will explain how to use it um, if you're using a vertical pattern. So on to the fabric. We always say use a woven. So this is just a cotton, poly cotton, really simple. And as you can see, it's relatively lightweight. You can use as lightweight as something like a Tana lawn, which is very, very fine. And you can definitely go up to a medium weight upholstery fabric. A curtain fabric um, would be fine. Um, what you just need to think about is the thickness of the fabric. And you'll certainly see when we get to the end of this how easily it will tuck under the edge of the shade to give you the really professional finish you're looking for. We always say don't use stretch fabrics because it just doesn't work, which is why you never see jersey um, lampshades. So lampshades made out of stretch fabrics. So always go with a cotton woven. Linen is very good. Um, and as I say, any types of cotton are fine. So I'm just going to move my fabric out of the way. Just wanted to make sure I'd laid that flat so we don't get any creases in there. That's the other thing is, is just pre-prepare your materials by cutting them down to size, but not exactly to size, uh, because you might need to play with the fabric or pattern, um, and also make sure that your fabrics are pressed as well. So you could actually be using a fabric instead of a wallpaper here on the inside if you want to. That's, you know, you can do that as well. So I'm just going to lay my wallpaper with a pattern faced down. Okay, so just want to make sure that you can see. There we go. And then we're going to take our PVC panel and we're just going to lay that on the top. Okay, so the first thing to do is to just peel off the backing. So just peel it up gently and peel back the backing paper. Now, you can see that this is not that wide, it's 21 centimetres. So if there was a particular pattern you wanted to capture in the wallpaper, you might want to think about the positioning and it might end up a little bit lower down on the paper, or a little bit higher up to make sure that you captured that because we're actually gonna cut these margins away. So just something to think about depending on what you've got um, on your wallpaper or your fabric that you're putting on the inside. So I'm just gonna peel this away and I always peel around about five to 10 centimetres. And because I don't need to worry too much about my pattern, I'm just gonna position that down there. And I'm just gonna rub with the base of my fist. And you may get a wobble on the camera. That's because my table is slightly wobbly because we're doing this at home. So there we go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop my hand underneath and just start pulling, and I'm sure you can see here down at the bottom, just pulling away that backing paper. And I'm just gonna do the same, just keep pushing the PVC down so the self-adhesive side is sticking down nicely onto the wallpaper. I'll just pull that over, and you just continue. And as you get more confident, you can pull a little bit more away. There we go. And I'm just going to actually turn it round so you can see the end. So if I just turn round like that. And I'm actually going to pull all the rest of that off now. 
can pop it in the bin. There we go. So just as a double check, I always flip over. And just to check, it's more with fabric, but it applies as well to wallpaper. Just make sure there isn't any creases. I'm really happy with that. Sometimes with fabric, you can get a tiny little fray stuck underneath your fabric. Um, and that obviously, you don't want to see that on your lampshade. So it's just always worth the little double check there. Brilliant. I'm really happy with that. So I'm just gonna take my non-fabric scissors and I'm simply gonna cut round. And I'm just gonna use the edge of the PVC as a guide. There we go. So we're just cutting along the edge. There we go. And then I'll just spin that round to do the other short edge. So this could be fabric, like I say, and you would just do exactly the same thing, but just with your fabric scissors, just so you get a nice crisp, clean edge. And I think this one particularly for me is great if you've got a feature wallpaper wall. It's something I'm a bit of a fan of. Um, and it means that the leftover wallpaper, you can then make a really lovely shade just to kind of pick out the accent of your feature wall. Or it might be something if you make lampshades um, as a business, you might want to take commissions again or interior design, really useful for that as well. So let's just flip that over. There we go. And you can see that that's now all cut out. So now we're going to start with the fabric side. So I'll just lay my fabric back out. So my fabric doesn't really have a right or a wrong side. It's identical on both sides. But if it did, you would now need the wrong side facing up. So that means that the right side of the fabric would be facing down. And I've just spotted a little fray there. So I'm just going to make sure that my fabric doesn't have any bits on it before we get started. There we go. And it's a similar principle to what we've just done. So we're almost repeating the same again. What we need to think about on this part is we need a margin at the top and the bottom of at least two centimetres. Um, just to make sure that we can then apply our adhesive strip afterwards. So um, that's why I always cut my fabric just that bit bigger, um, just to make sure. And also at this point, again, if you had, say, a pattern on this side of your fabric, you might want to think about what you get in because this will be the part here between the two edges of the PVC that will be showing. And just a word on patterns really, um, is if you had a pattern on the inside, on your wallpaper and a pattern on the outside, and say, imagine we had two little, two little fellas, two little men here, and we had two little men on the outside, you would want to make sure that they were Going on, going this way to the top of the shade and this way to the top of the shade because you wouldn't want when you've made everything up to realise that, that um, your little fellas are the wrong way round. So just have a little think about that um, as you're positioning on here. I don't have to think too much because this is an all over pattern and I've also got a plane on the outside. So we're going to do exactly the same. So just let me get that so you can see it. And I'm just going to peel away the back in again Exactly the same, about five to 10 centimetres. And then I'm just going to position that onto my fabric. And exactly the same. So once you've done the first side, the second side's really easy. 
And we're just going to keep pushing that on there. That's it. And I'll just move it along a little. So I'm just pulling from underneath, as you saw before. Okay, and I'm just going to spin it round again. Normally I would keep going, but just so that you can see. Just keep pulling the backing paper away. I'm just going to pull completely away now. There we go. fabric there lovely okay so that's now my second stage so that means that my pvc is completely adhered to both the fabric just doing my double check and i'm doing it particularly because this fabric has got a little bit of a fray and if you have a linen fabric you will find that that will have frays and i'm just going to turn around and just there i just want to smooth that down so there's nothing caught underneath, which is good. So I'm happy with the way that that's looking. And now we're going to take our self-adhesive PVC strip. So as I mentioned, this is going to act a little bit like a seam allowance. And when you buy our kits, this is already built in. But because this is double sided, we need to add this on afterwards. So I'm just going to peel off the back in. And as you can see, this is really tacky. And what I'm going to do, and I'm just going to actually lower my camera so you can see a little bit better. Is I'm just going to stick this at the top of my wallpaper side. And you can see there that I've lined it up on the edge as neatly as I can to give me a flush edge. And what we're gonna do is, again, it's just similar to what we've done really, is we're just pulling away the backing paper. Oops, got a bit stuck there. And you can see that there's a couple of tiny little gaps. Don't worry too much. This is a, a rough margin it's giving us. And we're just going to continue all along the top. So I'm just going to go off the camera and carry on. And then I'll spin round to show you the other end. So just cut away the backing paper because it's just getting in the way there. And just do a full turn. So we're going to come down. So this is the opposite end now. Just make sure you can see, there we go. And when we get to the other end, I'm just gonna do exactly the same. I'm going to just snip so it's flush. There we go. And then we're gonna repeat on the top. So, there we go, and I'll just lift this up now. So just getting that flush again, and then just adding it to the top. And like I say, if there's a few little gaps, don't worry too much. None of this fabric margin at the top will be seen because all of that is going to get tucked under the rings at the final stage. So I'm just going to keep rolling. And then I'll just come back. Come in a second. There we go. So you can see now, just snip that away. So we've got 
as flush as possible at the edges here on one end and I'll just spin around and the same on the other end and that's created that margin what that stops us from having to do is taking a ruler and measuring and marking and measuring and marking. This just creates a really beautiful line. And now we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to cut this out. So this time we need our fabric scissors. And I'm just going to start on the short edge. And we're just going to cut along there as neatly as possible and then we're going to use that PVC strip as a guide so just you can see I'm just cutting away the excess fabric and if you wobble a little, don't worry, because again, it's not going to get seen. Just pull that so that you can see. Whoops. There we go. So I'm just going to turn around so we can do the short edge again. There we go. And then we've just got one long edge to, to finish off. So you can see that actually making these up it's really quite a quick process so and as I said great if you're maybe an interior designer or if you already sell curtains or you make cushions this is just a really nice thing to do or you might just be somebody who really loves your home and wants to make something really unique um, and they make great presents as well for people so once you can make lampshades, you will find that people will be asking you or you can gift them, which is a really nice thing to be able to do. There we go. So we've now cut away and we're just left with our fabric underneath, our wallpaper and then our strips. And we're now actually going to take these strips away. So just very gently lift the strip up and I just tend to do this really slowly just in case there are any frays. If you have got a fraying fabric you can just kind of push them away with your finger or take your scissors and just snip them. So I'm just going to do this all the way down so that's one and these are reusable the sticky will stay on them so if you want to you can just simply wrap them round and they'll stay sticky for a, a little while so something you can recycle if you want to you can see the tackiness on there and that's what's holding our wallpaper and our fabric in place and then I'm just going to do exactly the same along the bottom just lift and very gently pull away there's a little bit of fray here sticking so I'm just going to get my scissors and snip that loose there we go that's, that's it there and if you have a little fray as I have here don't worry too much because we're going to tuck that under And what I'm just going to do is those little frays that you can see, I'm just going to snip them away now so they don't get caught in anything else we're doing. Got a few more up at the other end. There we go. Okay. So we've got one final thing to do on our panel, and that is to take our double-sided tape 
and we're just going to run a length of it from the top here on our wallpaper down to the bottom here. And I'm going to snip that with my tape scissors. There we go. And that's going to be our seam. So that's what's going to hold our shade together once we've rolled everything. So we're done with the PVC panel now. We're actually finished with that for the moment. So I'm just going to on the rings. So bringing these back to the table and also again taking our double sided tape we're just going to deal with the plain ring first of all and we're actually going to add the tape onto the plain ring. So I've just turned this um, this way so you can see so it's nearer to the camera and I'm just going to get started and then I'll explain what we need to do. So as you can see there you can see the red, which is the backing. And as I mentioned before, the tape is actually clear. And you can see that the ring is sitting in between the two edges of the tape. So it doesn't have to be millimetre perfect, but I just tend to kind of run about five centimetres at a time. And if I don't get it centred, I can just pull back. There's a little bit of fluff there. I'm just going to remove that. And I'm just moving it round. And this is really what's going to hold our shade together. So this is one of the key components of making the shade happen. There we go. And you can just see that I'm just adding. It's quite a nice therapeutic job, this I find. Just moving round. And as we start approaching where the ends meet, I've got a little tip for you. So here, you can see that our tape is about to meet. So instead of letting it overlap, I just take my tape scissors and snip. And that, you can see, has just left a little gap. It's around about, well, it's under half a centimetre. It's tiny, really. And that means, one, we can see where our two ends meet because once you've overlapped, it's really quite difficult. And the other, it means that you don't have a problem trying to lift the tape. Um, so just a little tip there to leave a little gap. And then we're just going to push, and this is quite important, fingers and thumbs, and we're rolling the tape around the ring. Now, it won't meet at the back, so don't try and force it to. It's just a little bit short, but it's not supposed to. What we want is the stickiness on this side. So we're just going to push using our fingers and thumbs all the way round. And we're just kind of moulding it round, really. And what that's doing is it's coating the ring with as much tape as possible. So just keep moving round. There we go. So that's one ring done. There we go. And then we're going to do exactly the same on this ring. So I'll just repeat that part again at the beginning so you can see. There we go, find my end. Onto the ring. And then keep moving it round and you can see it's sitting centre. Just pull that back a little bit. There we go. We're just keeping moving round. And just a little bit of an advice on this is the backing of the tape is flexible too, but it will try and peel itself off. So it will start trying to spring back. So if you're making multiple shades at the same time, um, I would say just do this just before you roll your rings as opposed to having a big pile of them ready to go because I found in the past that they can kind of spring back a little bit and you don't want uh, too much air getting to that tape before you've had the chance to, to get it rolled and on to the shade. So there we go again, just get into the point where the meat, just do a little snip and then 
push down with your fingers and thumb. So just, there we go. And don't worry about the spokes at this point, it shouldn't really affect those at all. So you're just rolling it down. I kind of do it when my right hand's doing the work and my left hand's kind of following. <laughs> Just making sure it's all done. There we go. So, that now is both our rings ready. So our next stage is actually rolling the shade itself. So I just want to have a chat with you before we do this and just show you a few things. So I'm just bringing that round and I'm actually turning it so I've got the untaped end um, because we're going to actually roll towards the taped end which is going to become our seam. So I don't have any direction on here but just to point out to you, if you were making a pendant shade and you had a particular pattern so let's go back to our little men who were on here and we wanted those little men to be facing upwards obviously and we want a pendant shade we would put the utility ring at the top and we would put the plain ring at the bottom and if we wanted it the other way round where we wanted it to be a table lamp so they're sitting on a table lamp base we would switch these and put them the opposite way round. So it's just worth um, thinking about whether what type of shade you want if you've got a directional pattern. Now, it doesn't matter for me. I can make this either way round because it would work either as a pendant or as a table lamp, but it is just something to think about as, as you're making and um, before you hit this stage. So I'm just gonna have to change my camera angle slightly or else you won't be able to see what I'm doing fully. So if you just bear with me for one moment, first of all, I'm just going to take off the backing from the utility. And the reason I do this first, and you can probably tell there's a little tip coming up, is because we can use the utility section to pop that on our table and it's not getting stuck to anything. So just bear with me a second while I just change my camera angle and then I can show you how I'm going to roll the rings. So, yeah, so hopefully you're going to be able to see that. I might just need to angle up a tiny little bit. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to undo the backing tape. And this is where I say about having the gap because straight away I've been able to go to it. If not, I could have been stood here for five minutes trying to find it. So that's a good job. And I'm just peeling off the backing tape there. And now I've got to position these on the ring. So I'm just going to do the first one actually first so you can see. So these need to sit on the wallpaper um, and they need to sit right on. And I think you can just see my finger there right on the very edge. So not on the fabric, actually on the wallpaper. And I'm going to position that down and then I'm going to show you. Actually, I'm just going to, that's perfect, actually. So I'm just going to come in a little bit closer. So you can see that that's just right to the very edge here. There's about a millimetre gap along here. So it's not overhanging into the fabric. It's actually sitting um, quite tight onto the PVC. And then I'm going to do on the other side as well. So I'm just going to lean over it a little. In fact, I'm just going to come round and do that. And just another tip is not to put the spoke like this. So it's sitting on the seam. Can you see? It needs to be so you're in the main part. So I'm just going to position on there. Yep. Great. And now I'm in a position where I can start rolling. And we have to roll these simultaneously. There's another uh, little tip here is not to push down too hard. So I'm just going to keep rolling. I'm going to pull it towards the camera so you can see a bit better. 
So hopefully you can see that. And already the tape is doing its job. So I can actually let go of these pretty much now. I just, there we go. And that means I can now come to this side and start rolling them a little bit at a time, making sure, because I can, I can kind of look closer. I don't know if you can actually see my head there. You might be able to. So I'm literally pulling these down and into position. And I'm not pushing really hard. I'm being quite gentle because the harder we push, the more difficult the next stage becomes. So we're just almost letting the tape do its work. So I just want to check that you can still see and I'll just bring it over a little bit. And then what I'm going to do, normally, again, I would carry on, but I'm just going to turn around so you can see from this way and just make it a bit better. So I'll just come back to my original position. And just as we're approaching here, I just need to take my tape off. In honesty, I should have done that first, but I completely forgot. I think I was focusing on the camera angle. So just very carefully, actually just let go there, just take off the backing. There we go. Okay, because we're going to be rolling toward this here because we're going to need to close that up. So just keep rolling. Making sure that they're sitting nice and tight. There we go. And when we get to about kind of 10 centimetres away, I'm just going to bring it up so you can see what I'm going to do next. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring that towards me and just make sure that here we've got a nice flush edge. So both edges here are nice and flush together and they are on mine. So just there we go and then down on that side. And then very, very carefully, I'm just going to gently push that into position. And I'm not gonna put any pressure on here now because I don't want to bend that center. So just, that's lovely. And then what I'm going to do is just turn over and using my seam roller, I'm just gonna go in on the seam and push that down. If you haven't got one, just simply okay. use your hand push that down into place. Lovely. And now we're nearly there with our shade. So we're not doing bad at all, actually. So that is now starting to look like the shade I showed you at the beginning. So we're on to our next stage. So let me just make sure you can see this. So you can see here, there's a little overlap where the seam has overlapped. We've got our inside seam and our outside seam. And what I need to do is just cut away the fabric on the inside seam. So I'm just going to snip away a little square. I'm just going to use my scissors. And then I'm just going to chop a little square away. So that's the square. And you can just see here where I've taken it from. And I've just kind of cut a little bit under the parallel of the seam there. And it's just so we don't have any extra bulk. I'm gonna flip over, do exactly the same thing. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then the next stage is just for us to start folding under so it's all fingers and thumbs so we're going to take it again and we're going to push down so kind of similar action to how we put the tape on and as you can see there just bringing it up to the camera i've kind of pushed it in there so it's just laying flat we're not trying to tuck it under at this stage but we're just laying it in flat so just pull it down nice and tightly and that gives us this really nice crisp edge along the top And this really just prepares us for the next stage. So 
just making sure that that's sitting underneath there and the tape will be showing so it will start adhering to that straight away okay and then we're going to flip over and repeat on the other side now there's a few little frays here so i'm going to get rid of those straight away a little one there i noticed and one here great so exactly the same start on the inside seam and i tend to kind of work quite methodically and we're already at a spoke don't worry about that i'm going to show you how to do that in a minute so just keep pushing around just pass the spoke Lovely. There's a little fray popping out there. I'm just going to take that off. Okay, so turning back over to the plain side, just because it's very easy to demo from this side, I'm just going to find. There we go. A seam. And we're now going to take our little tucking in tool. So, as you can see, it's got a point and then the two long edges and the serrated edge. It really is up to you how you use this, how you kind of find your groove with it. I like to use the point personally, um, but also use the serrated edge at times. It just depends. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip back and start on my inside seam. And I'm actually going to bring my camera down and in so you can see. And I'm just going to take my point and I'm going to start to push that underneath and you might kind of think oh surely this is impossible and it's not actually it works quite smoothly once you get going so we're just pushing under and I'm just using the point there and I tend to kind of start a bit further up and pull downwards and you need to be not too gentle but not too firm either it's kind of finding the balance and that's why we didn't push on the rings too hard because we want there to be just a little bit of movement for us to be able to tuck that underneath and this is going under really nicely there might be a bit of a wobble on the camera and i'm afraid that's my wobbly table so apologies for that there we go and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do what I call swooshing. I just swoosh any little bits or frays underneath and then just keep moving around. If you want to, you can use your serrated edge to kind of help that under. That's quite useful if you've got slightly thicker fabric. There we go. And I'll swoosh any little phrase later. So I'm just trying to get the main bulk. There we go. And you'll hear a little cracking sound from time to time. And all that is, is the tape lifting up. That's going under quite nicely. And then if this starts to get a little bit bent... You can just simply get your um, tape scissors and recreate your point. I'm just going to swoosh those little frays and any bits I can see. And we're already round to our seam, so this is working really nicely. There we go. Just straighten that out a bit. There we go. And if you've made one of our kits before, you'll be fairly familiar with this part of the process. So there's just a little fray there. I'm just going to snip. Okay. 
and then all the way just I like to just go through just make sure I've got every bit in and this is the bit that looks makes it look incredibly professional I think and of course double-sided shades aren't really a thing on the high street so what you're making is quite unique there we go so I've just been round that's a little bit popping up so that's one side done and then I'm just going to flip over now onto the other side. Before I do that, I'm just going to show you how to do your spokes. So just make sure that that's, there we go. So just to show you the spoke, you take your fabric scissors and you just lift the fabric and all you need to do is snip in. And we're only snipping, you can see here where the cut opens, as far as the edge of the frame. So that will just drop down like a little pair of curtains around the spoke. So you can go around and do these now. And there we go, that will drop down. And then the final one. There we go, like that, okay. So I'm gonna do exactly the same. I'm gonna find my inside seam going to take my tool. I'm just going to trim a little bit more off there so I get a nice new point. And then I'm just going to start pushing that under in exactly the same way. There we go. That's going under nicely. Now when you get to a spoke, the way I do it is I just stop a little bit in advance. So you can see there I've left, there's a little bit of the um, fabric hanging out and I use the side to just neatly push behind the spoke first. Don't leave it until I get to it. It just means I can do both of those at exactly the same time, which is another good little tip. And then I push back and get all those little bits in. And then I start a bit higher away from the spoke and kind of work back towards it. Sometimes you have to put your hand on the inside. There we go. And then just keep pushing round. And I'm just going to use that corner there to push that underneath and get that started. There we go. This side of my fabric's frayed a little bit on the top, so I'm just aware that I just don't want to pull those frays out. There we go. And again, I'm approaching a spoke. I'm sorry if that camera's wobbling. And I'm just going to push behind that to get the fabric pushed in. Great. And what is a really good tool is if you have a thicker fabric is to use an old loyalty card um, with the softened corners because that also can work just as well. So there we go. I'm just approaching my final spoke now. Making sure it's all tucked under. So obviously I'm doing this quite quickly just for the demo purposes, but you can take your time over this at home when you're making up the shades. There we go, just trap that under there and pull it along there and they're all in. It's quite difficult because these little blue parts here on the wallpaper do look a little bit like the fabric because it's quite a nice colour match. So I keep trying to tuck in pieces that are actually already on the wallpaper. So again, just going to do my final spoke tuck there, just at the back, getting that nicely tucked under. Lovely. So if you didn't want to just make the double sided, and that's obviously what we're doing today, we do have a really wide variety of kits available as well. And the kits all come with all of the parts I've mentioned today, obviously with a single sided PVC and not with the um, 
the PVC self-adhesive strips. So do have a look at them because we don't just do drum shades either. We do all sorts of different shapes. So we do ovals and squares um, and even hexagons, which are really, really cool and look brilliant in a kind of a modern geometric fabric. So there's lots to choose from there. So do have a look at the kind of the full range on the website. And also, as I said before, have a look at the blog because we have lots of really interesting makers on there that we feature who make lampshades and lots of really interesting how-tos um, and tutorials. So definitely worth a look. So we're very nearly there now. Just at that final piece, there we go. Just took that under, lovely. I'm just gonna make sure there's no little frays. Yeah, I'm happy with this. Just a little one there that I want to get underneath. Brilliant. Okay, so there we have it. Our double-sided shade all made up. So that's our step-by-steps on how to make that. And just to remind you, everything is available from our website, danels.com. So, um, yeah, lovely, lovely shade. I love the fact that all the action and the pops of colour are on the inside um, because obviously from the outside, it just looks like a kind of plain lampshade and then you get this brilliant kind of effect using the double-sided PVC. So I'm really happy with that. I hope you've enjoyed um, joining me today and watching um, and learning how to make um, a double-sided shade. Um, and also just to mention, we do have a competition um, which is our Me Made Shade competition. And this is an Instagram competition every month. So um, you can um, enter that by just simply making up a lampshade from our kit and hashtagging with Me Made Shade. So I think we're going to hang on for a few minutes. Um, if you've got any more um, questions for us, I can see all the thank yous coming in. So that's lovely. I'm really looking forward to seeing if you've made a shade with us today as well. And thanks very much for watching. It's always a pleasure uh, to make up shades and know that it's inspiring you. And, um, and yeah, and you're making them at home. So thank you very much. So I don't know if anybody's got any questions they want to pop up, pop up on the chat or I know it's been quite busy and I think people, <laughs> a gin and tonic, that will be definitely what's happening tonight. <laughs> oh, thank you, Ruth. That's lovely. That's great. I just saw a question pop up there about a hand marbled paper for the outside. And it might be useful to look at our wallpaper tutorial that went live on the blog today because there are some tips there about how you would tuck in. So that might be something that might be quite useful for you. Thank you, Dawn. That's nice to hear. Don't forget to... Uh, to tag us in when you make your shades as well and you can tag them at Danelle's
hashtag Danelle's workshop as well from the back of today's workshop. So I think we're going to give it another minute or two and then we're going to draw to a close. So if you do have any other questions, just let us know. Yes, thank you, everybody.